Because the matrix transpose really just reflects the entries of a matrix across the diagonal, it's possible that when you do that reflection, uh, you actually get the same matrix back. When that happens, that sort of matrix is called symmetric. So any matrix that's equal to its own transpose is called symmetric. If, it, if you happen to get, if the transpose is actually the negative of what you started with, then it's called anti-symmetric. It, for both of these, there are actually some size restrictions. So if A is M by N, then A transpose is N by N, M, like this. And the only way for these to be equal is if these are the same size. So um, M has to be equal to N for symmetric matrices. So in other words, symmetric matrices must be square. And that's actually true for anti-symmetric matrices as well. If A is M by N, that means the transpose is N by M. But the only way for two matrices to be negatives of each other is if they're the same size. And that means that right, these sizes have to be the same. And so N has to be equal to N. And again, we find that it has to be square. All right. So you can only have a symmetric or anti-symmetric matrix if it's square. And of course, it has to have this symmetry property. So let's look at some examples. Uh, let's just check whether these matrices are symmetric or anti-symmetric. So remember, symmetric means when you reflect across this diagonal, the matrix stays the same. So for this first one, when we reflect across this diagonal, the entries on the diagonal don't move. Uh, but the entries across diagonal like this swap places. But since they're both two, right? if we do this reflection, you actually get the same matrix back. So this is symmetric. All right, what about this 3 by 3 matrix? So again, let's reflect. Oh, incidentally, since it's symmetric, it can't be anti-symmetric. OK, for the second one, let's reflect across this diagonal. So when we do this reflection, let's see, the 0 stays in its place. The minus 4 and the minus 5 switch. And this fi these 5s switch. The 0 stays where it is. The 6 and minus 6 switch. And the 1 stays where it is. So are these the same matrix? Well, definitely not exactly the same. So not symmetric. Is it anti-symmetric? Well, are, are these two matrices negatives? Well, no, because you know there are several entries that don't work. But just to have an example, this entry here, if this matrix were anti-symmetric, this should be a minus 4, but it's a minus 5. So this isn't anti-symmetric either. All right, what about this third example? So if we do our transpose, right? the 0 stays put. In fact, the whole diagonal stays put. This 2 and minus 2 switch places. The 1 and minus 1 switch places. And then the 4 and minus 4 switch places. OK, so these aren't the same matrix, so not symmetric. But in fact, these are negatives of each other. Every entry in this transposed matrix is the negative of the corresponding entry in the first matrix. So this is an anti-symmetric matrix. OK, what about this last example? Well, remember, we noticed that symmetric and anti-symmetric matrices have to be uh, square. And this matrix isn't square. So this is neither symmetric nor anti-symmetric. For a couple more examples of sort of what it means to be symmetric or anti-symmetric, uh, let's just fill in some entries of these matrices in order to make A symmetric and B anti-symmetric. So for A. Right. If we did a transpose, this 2 would jump down here. But if A is going to be symmetric, that means it should have been a 2 there to begin with. So there should be a 2 here if this is going to be symmetric. The minus 5 in the upper right would jump down to the lower left. But that means that it should have been minus 5 down there to begin with. So minus 5. And then similarly, this 6 would jump down here. So we should have a 6 here. So that's how we could fill in this matrix to uh, make it symmetric. For B, let's make B anti-symmetric. Well, just like with A, right? you can check where entries would have gone if you take a transpose. This minus 3 would jump down here. 
So this, what should start here, is the negative of minus 3. So in other words, positive 3. And then similarly, this 2, if you take the transpose, this 2 jumps to the lower left, so its negative should be there to begin with. And then the 7 should be a minus 7 down here. But what about, what about the diagonal entries? For any entry on the diagonal, say b11, when you do the transpose, right, it stays put, because when you switch the, in, the indices 1, 1, you, you get 1, 1 again. But if this is anti-symmetric, then that should be the negative of the original. So we're looking for, so for this diagonal, diagonal entry, it's the first diagonal entry should be its own negative. Well, what number is its own negative? There's only one number that, its own ne that is its own negative, and that's 0. So any entry that's on the diagonal of a anti-symmetric anti matrix has to be 0. So these three diagonal entries have to be 0.